Hello guys, um, I'm back again and um, today we're going to start with the little ESR meter adapt that um, John, uh, J underscore Diddy underscore B um, on the forum sent me. So it's a convenient little box that allows you to measure ESR with your standard multimeter. So um, first of all, why don't we start by taking a look at what I was sent. I was sent with a pair of banana plugs and these little spring hooks. So this um, does have support for two wire and four wire measurements and it outputs 100 millivolts per ohm of ESR measured. So um, why don't we start by opening it up and taking a look at what's, in, what's inside. So um, Let's go put these in a little inside here so they don't get lost and open her up. And um, while I'm doing this, I'll just bring up some new things that have been going on in the lab. Um, I currently have acquired a an HP or Agilent or Keysight, whatever you want to call it, 6114A precision power supply. I purchased that broken for around 30 bucks. Um, it was more more around 40, and um, I'm still in the process of repairing that. I've identified the two failed components and. About to get the replacement soon, and also I have acquired a Fleur E4 thermal imaging camera, which has been enhanced. All right, so I've taken the four screws out, and we can open it up. All right, so we have a nine volt battery in here. Can it's a little um, what does that say? Hammond Manufacturing. Oh, made in Canada enclosure. Interesting. All right, so um, I'll just put that to the side. Here it is, it's powered by a single 9 volt battery. You can take that off. Alright, get that out of the way. And um, here's the front. And let's take a look at the back. Alright, so um, let's zoom in. Alright, so um, it's probably not going to work too well, but if we look at what we have. Um, I took a quick look at the schematic and it's it, it's really quite a simple little board that's tremendously useful. Um, I don't have off the top of my head exactly what this is. I know this is a linear tech op amp right here and there's an assortment of passives um, to support these components as well. Um, and here's a pot for adjustments. I remember when I first got this, um, it wouldn't measure anything. I was really quite disappointed and then I kept, um, the funny thing was it would output no voltage and then um, I later found out it was just a dry joint on a 7805 regulator here. So I am going to try and zoom in a bit, so bear with me here for a second. I think I've maxed, yeah, I think I've maxed out the zoom on this lens. So. Um, Basically, um, there's really not much going on here. It's basically just the operational amplifier and um, this chip right here. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what it is. So um, while while I'm filming this, I will look, I will look it up. So um, basically, on this on on the on the board, um, the nine volt goes in and you have the 7805 and that's divided by these two resistors here for um, for the 2.5 volt plus and minus 2.5 volt rails so if you'll bear with me for a second here I'm gonna find out the um, I will find out the the what this component is and go into some more detail about exactly how this thing works 
Okay, so this chip right here is a 74, 74 series, um, 74 C4053. It is a CMOS switch or multiplexer. And um, so basically how these ESR meters work, this applies to any ESR meter, is it will generate a, an oscillating frequency. Uh, I believe this one is at around 100 kilohertz and uh, it's a square wave and then there is a um, the switch it provides a current to the capacitor and um, operational amplifier plots the it amplifies the V out and it returns the um, and it returns the output voltage through these two terminals so that's just basic of how this works um, I'm not an expert so don't quote me on that but that is how I believe it basically works and um, so I've basically torn it down. Uh, we can take a look at the back side of the board. You can really see there's not much going on there. And um, I'll put it back together and then we can continue with the trying it out and playing it. So I have reassembled it and um, so we're going to take a look at it now. Let's just start out by measuring a 1 ohm resistor. Nothing fancy. Um, let's get my cheap and Chinese multimeter. It's a Sperry DM5300. Probably a rebranded CEM. So I'll let us zoom out here. And, um, place the meter. It's manual ranging, really nothing special. So I'm going to replace these probes with the banana plugs here. And um, uh, a minor quibble about the design about this is I would actually love an indicator LED to indicate it's on. Because, um, yes, the switch is marked on right here, but I think an LED is just more convenient. Plus, I mean, it might be on, but I don't know if the battery's good or something. I mean, if I switch it on and the battery doesn't, and the light doesn't come on, well, I know the battery's dead or there's a problem. So I think that, would, that would, wouldn't be a bad idea. So um, let's just go ahead and do a four-wire measurement on a one-ohm resistor. Um, you put you just I'm just putting my spring leads in. All right. Okay, so um, I have um, standard half watt five percent one ohm resistors, half watt five percent. Uh, good. Good brand, not a uh, one hung low. I bought these off of DigiKey. Um, they came in a kit. I just went ahead and bought a resistor kit. So let's go ahead and um, power this up. Turn on our multimeter. So it's 100 millivolt per ohm. So we put it. So we should just put it on the 200 millivolt range. It's at overload right now, and when it's open, it provides around a 2.45. Provides 2.45 volts out. All right, so um, this, I'm gonna move this back. All righty, flip this on. I'm sorry you can't really see what I'm doing here, but um, yeah, it's quite hard with, um, it's quite hard doing this actually, due to the fact that um, the cameras can only, all right, so this is a 100 ohm resistor. I'm sorry, a 1 ohm resistor. It's probably a bit off. Um, I have connected it in 4 wire mode. Take a look like that. The 2 positive and the 2 negative. So um, that's all fine. Well, why don't we take a look at measuring a couple of capacitors next? Right? So. Um, I think this thing might be a little bit out of whack as well. I'm not exactly sure if it was calibrated before it was sent to me, so up to anyone's, anyone's guess. So I have, a, I have here, um, all right, well, so um, why don't we just go ahead and just start with the two wire measurements, since this is what you will want to use for diagnosing parts. So I just have a massive 4700 microfarad Excuse me, it's allergy season here. Uh, 4700 microfarad capacitor. 
electrolytic, uh, nothing special. So it has, it's supposed to have an ESR of 710 milliohms. So I'm just going to connect it up. Negative there. And um, is that accurate? It's anyone's guess, plus um, ESR lowers better, so that's the maximum rated. And um, yeah, because this meter hasn't been calibrated in quite a while either. So, eh. Capacitor's good though. So next we'll take some cheap one hung lows I have. Let's take a look. Um, I know I have some one hung lows. Oh, I had a crap Exxon over here. Not sure where that went. But, yeah, let's just, um, okay. I have some Chinese caps here. Probably not of excellent quality. Give me a second, please. All right, here it is. Some uh, Chang Hong or something. I know you can't really see it, but let's go ahead and hook it up. So 2200 microfarad, 25 volt capacitor. Right. this on, second one, hook it on, and there's your ESR, just divide that by 100, so 340 milliohms. So that was just a quick look at this ESR meter, um, I will try and use it when repairing some things later, like i looking out for a Tektronix 2465 series scope, um, to a good friend for my DS1074Z. So I will certainly use this as a tool for debugging in the future. Thank you for watching.